All right, guys, so now that you got the like two second tour, the real quick overview of the interface, let's go ahead and learn how to make a really basic design. This is probably gonna be the dumbest design ever, but you're gonna be familiar with using the tools and learning how to build a really simple user interface. So make sure that you have this main storyboard file open right here. This is pretty much the interface or the design, the part that the user sees. And you can just click it once and it'll pop up in the main area. And if you don't see this little file navigation, then you probably accidentally toggle this panel. So make sure that you are in the standard editor and you have this unchecked. And also, if your main area looks a little bit different than mine, then that is probably because this little button is kind of like a toggle within a toggle. So if you go to the bottom left and click this other panel, then that's going to toggle that section on and off. And I'll show you guys what this is later on. It's going to make a lot more sense once we start adding views into here or items. So just toggle that right now. And of course, we can scroll left, right, up, down. And as you can see, this kind of resembles, I don't know, it's starting to kind of look like a phone. Or, I mean, I re remember this little battery thing. That's usually on my smartphone. But, I don't know, it looks kind of weird. Well, first of all, let me explain this. If you notice, this layout we're looking at right here, it's square. But you're like, okay, that's kind of dumb because shouldn't it be in the shape of like an iPhone or at least the iPad? Because, I mean, those are kind of like rectangular. And this interface that I'm supposed to be designing on is square. So that's kind of stupid. Well, actually, Apple made your interface builder square very deliberately for a very specific reason. And that is because... Whenever you're developing these apps, what you really want to do is you want to design it in a way that it's adaptive to every screen. So an iPhone is, of course, a different size than the iPad. And how's the user going to be holding it? Is it going to be horizontal, vertical? So whenever you're designing it, you really don't know what size or what orientation the user is going to be holding it. So what they did is they said, OK, we're going to give you a square. That's it, a plain generic square. And later on, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make adaptive layouts that pretty much, like you would think, adapt to every screen. And you guys are going to see, okay, actually, that square is a really good idea. So that's, uh, I don't know, the, the story of the square. So you can tell your grandkids about it. So now let's actually add something to the screen. So on the right hand side, if you scroll down, you can see the object library. And if you don't see this, then make sure you click this little icon right here. It's the circle with a square in the middle of it. So click that and you're going to see the object library. And you can actually, if right now, click on this handle right here and drag it up. And that's going to give you a little bit more space to see what's going on. And of course, these are all the objects or views or items that you can add to your interface. Now, what you can do is you can scroll down and look for the one you want. But what I'm going to do like 90% of the time is just use this little search area right here. It saves you a whole bunch of time. So for right now, we can just add some really basic text. And then basic text is called a label. So go to this search and start typing in LA. And of course, label is one of the first one that pops up. So of course, this, like it says, is just static text plain old text, nothing new. And if you grab this, you can click and drag it onto the screen. So you can just drag it. And as you can see, as you're dragging it, it's going to give you these guidelines up and down, side to side. And this is, of course, the orientation or the positioning saying, OK, now that we positioned it with that blue line, it makes sure that it appears in the dead center of the screen. Pretty cool, pretty cool. That was easy enough. So now let me go ahead and double click this item. And whenever you double click it, you can actually change the text on it. So I'm gonna change this to, I don't know, like bacon or something like that. Now, obviously you have some little controls that you can change the size of it, whatever. And you can also move it around, simple enough. You guys probably could have figured that out. But go ahead and take it and position it right in the middle of your screen again. And look at that our very first interface is designed. Let's go ahead and test this baby out. So what I'm going to do 
is make sure that you have one of these iPhones selected. I'm gonna select like the iPhone 5. So this is essentially your simulator. And once you have a simulator selected, you can click this button and it's gonna kick off and run your app. So here is mine right there. And if yours is not the same size as mine or maybe you want it bigger or smaller, then what you can do is you can go to window, scale, and I have mine at 50% because if I have it 100%, of course it's kind of hard to see in these tutorials. So I like mine window, scale 50%, and there you go. So, huh, look at that. I mean, okay, let me move this out a lot. Okay, in our interface builder, we put that thing right in the middle, but in our simulator, it's not appearing in the middle. So what the heck is going on here? Well, let me explain why we have this issue. You see, like I said, right now, whenever we design this interface, we're not designing it specifically for an iPhone or an iPod or an iPad. What we're doing is we're designing a generic interface that's supposed to be adaptive to every screen. Now, whenever we take these items right here and we start dragging them on what they're going to do is they're going to position themselves relative to the top left corner so if you see i don't know the exact number of pixels but say that it's 100 pixels down and 300 pixels across from the top left corner now maybe this looks really good on an ipad and maybe it's dead center however on an iphone 300 pixels across is right at the edge of the screen which isn't good. So how do we fix that? Well, there are a couple different ways that we can fix it. So for right now, just to um, kind of show you guys the quick and dirty way, this is kind of like the cheating way. I'm gonna show you guys in detail whenever I cover interface, uh, like uh, details and interfaces later on. But for right now, what we can do is this. Make sure that you have, just click somewhere in your empty view, in your empty interface right here and uncheck this button right here use size classes now uncheck this and we can check disable size classes and what it's going to do is it's going to take that square and it's going to turn your interface builder into the shape of an iphone so now what we can do is actually let me close my simulator so quit this and back in xcode take that item again and drag it right in the middle of your screen and all right so now whenever we build and run this again check out what happens build succeeded oh <laughs> look at that it now looks as expected whenever we were designing it so again that is one quick and dirty way to do it and for right now whenever you're just following along with these next couple examples that is how you can follow along and get the same results that i'm seeing but later on, what I'm going to show you guys how to do is I'm going to show you guys a better way to do that um, that's going to be adaptable to every single device. But for now, one other thing that I want to show you guys, since I have a little bit of time, is how to change attributes really quick. So if you say, okay, this obviously is the greatest design that I've ever seen. Just the word, just, just the word bacon on the screen I would how much money would I pay for this app probably like a thousand dollars but uh what we can do is I think we can make this even better so select this view right here and once you have that selected what you can do is you can go in this right panel and you can select this icon at the top that looks like it kind of looks like an arrow with a bar behind it it's supposed to resemble a slider and clicking this will show the attributes inspector these are pretty much all the properties or settings that you can apply to this item. So of course, all of this is really intuitive. You can change the size of it, or you can just change the color of it, the color of the text to something like red for baking. And of course, since I changed that font size, we need to resize this so it appears properly. And there you go. So now if you want to run this again, this is saying, okay, whenever you try to run it and you already have your simulator open, then it gives you this little warning. So what you can do is you can just hit stop or you can go and hit simulator, close, and then just run it again, whatever. 
but that's what that little warning says. So here you go, this is our brand new Bacon app, Bacon 2.0, it's the next big hit. So if you guys were learning iOS development so you can learn how to make a Bacon app, then thank you for watching. I will see you in a couple years, but if you want to learn a little bit more about iOS development and learn how to do some other cool things, then well, stick around because this series is going to get a whole lot better, and well, I'll see you guys next time.